Hello and uh, welcome to our meeting uh, with Ilham Rahut and uh, Kate Fumo of uh, uh, Justice Ambiental, a very important uh, organization uh, of uh, uh, Mozambique. Uh, today, uh, our meeting is about uh, Cabo Delgado situation. Uh, Cabo Delgado uh, is a, a, a province in, in north of Mozambique and uh, it's facing attacks of uh, supposed uh, terrorist groups with possible ties with uh, Al Shabaab since uh, 2017. Uh, the current situation is the, folly, is the following. Uh, about uh, 4,000 dead, almost 1 million refugees, serious violation of human rights, including from uh, Mozambique, uh, Mozambique police officers, gas investment of total uh, onshore in Afungi uh, suspended till now, uh, external uh, intervention of SADC and Rwanda armies, uh, after that, uh, uh, Russian Wagner and uh, uh, South African Doug uh, left the country. My name is Luca Bussotti, and uh, uh, now uh, we can uh, uh, speak uh, with uh, uh, our uh, with our uh, uh, representatives of uh, Justice Ambiental. Uh, well, uh, the first question is about. Uh, the uh, identities of uh, uh, insurgents. Uh, Mozambican and uh, as well as international press uh, spoke about uh, uh, possible ties with uh, uh, Al Shabaab or uh, um, Islamic State, but I think uh, uh, it's important uh, to point out. Uh, uh, the local identities of uh, uh, such groups. Uh, for instance, in, in, in general, uh, we know that uh, Kimwani and uh, Makua uh, uh, Yath um, are uh, close ties with insurgents. So uh, I wish to know uh, your opinion uh, about uh, such, uh, such groups uh, as at uh, the local, as at the international uh, level. Please. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. About the origin of, of origin of this uh, insurgency, it's a really complex uh, answer to uh, question to answer because it's still. Uh, there is a lot of things that must be analyzed in all of these. But of course, a lot of studies already showed that the, the insurgents, that this group has a lot of uh, origins, including foreigners from Tanzania, Kenya, Somalia, but also internal communities, as you mentioned, Kimwani and Makonde or Makuas. Of course, the, in, the local uh, uh, ethnicities also have uh, been struggling with internal problems. But as we always say, uh, all these have been exacerbated with the extractive industry because we can recall a lot of uh, problems Cabo Delgado was facing even before, even before uh, the, the insurgency. Uh, if you remember, we had uh, 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 problems in a community called Nyamanyumbir where Ruby has been started. Uh, yes, for we, long... we, we, with the Montepuez Ruby mining. Yes, the Montepuez Ruby mining. Yeah. But not only in that uh, community, we also have Balama in other communities where uh, extractive industry has been taking places. But, uh, and the, 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 the presence of the state, the presence of the government have been retracting the, the illegal extraction of uh, natural resources from the communities, which also create a kind of, uh, how can I say, like uh, uh, 
rebellion from the from the communities like uh, uh, they, are, they, not, they were not satisfied with all, all of this. But in the meantime, we also had a, 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 a radical uh, a radical history of insurgency uh, coming in, in, in inside of communities. Uh, and uh, this has been uh, talked about the local uh, Muslim uh, authorities in the communities to, go, to the government, but they didn't have, they didn't hurt to them in that time. You can speak in Portuguese if you want to. Yeah, ele percebe português. But I want, I want you to okay. understand it too. That's okay. why I'm speaking in English. <laughs> okay. Yes, we, we have to speak in English. I prefer Portuguese, but we have to speak in English. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, it's okay. So uh, all these problems with the appearance of this radical line of, uh, of uh, Muslim in the area, and also with the problems of uh, uh, the, 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 the locals have been forbidden to extract uh, uh, natural resources, and also with the inequalities, the lack of access to, to employment, all these problems can explain uh, all the, this question of insurgency. That's why the real origin of the insurgent are a mix of, uh, of, uh, of things. That's why it, it, it's a conflict that it's really complex to, to explain the causes. But uh, as I said, the causes are that inequality, access to employ, employment and also extractive industry you know so yes, but, we cannot... but but but, but uh, uh, sorry in your opinion are there ethnic or religious factors uh, at the base of this conflict uh, i i uh, i i can say that they they are they are they has an excuse actually because uh, it's a reality that we have been facing but it never has created has uh, this level of conflict if you analyze there are, we are talking about situations that have been part of our society for a time but it never been a cause of a violent conflict has now is so the question is why now? Because we we have been living with these problems for years, but why now? So when you're trying to understand why now this is happening, so it comes up this question of the gas exploration. Don't you think that the macondization of the state by by Newsy uh, could be one of, of, of uh, such factors? Uh, well, it's di di difficult, of, difficult to answer. <laughs> yeah, it's difficult to answer, but because we we heard, for example, that in the, the refugee camps, uh, the Macondas are are being uh, are receiving some benefit instead of the Kimwanis. But uh, it's not. Uh, I think that this is a very simplistic way to explain the the thing. There are other questions involved in, in this it's not it's not only a question of ethnicity because you also if you if you're talking about the macondization of the states if you see the the kimwani group who have been resettled in palma they went to a macondi area and the macondas received them and those are the ones who benefits who benefit has has uh, in, in commons uh, because uh, who were receiving money from the project. You see, so I, I, I it's difficult to to answer that, but uh, it's a mix of uh, uh, of things happening on the same basket. Okay, thank you. Well. Um... And in your opinion, uh, the measures that uh, uh, Mozambican authority uh, are taking uh, are sufficient to overcome this situation. I mean, measures not only at the uh, military or uh, uh, security level, 
but also at the social, so, socio-economic level. Uh, what's your opinion? Yeah, about the measures, you know, they they seems like they are taken in a way that the, the, it's not taking the how huge and uh, and really important is the situation we are living because in the in the first instance the government were saying that it's not a war uh, it's uh, it's not a war and uh, while society in mozambique were saying that we are living a war they they keep on saying that we are not living a war but they they hired a service of the mercenaries to go into the field and they were saying they, they the speech was ah we don't need foreigners to to support us in this internal problem we will solve it but suddenly they accept the foreigners who came in and also we have now these discussions of including the uh, social forces internal uh, like formal former former militaries they are, have been given some weapons to also fight at local local level the insurgency so all these measures at local level they are not uh, showing the the positive results that uh, we as a population we as mozambique and we as community need to to achieve these are not is not bringing us uh, uh, the peace back uh, uh, this uh, is creating a, uh, the the revolt result it's it's bringing for us the the escalate of the conflict the conflict is it started to be more more violent and more strong and apparently with more people joining to insurgency and for us it shows it the, the situation shows per se what is uh, the result of the measures that the government is taking for instance when, uh, the, um, there is a um, an agency for the development of the north do you know it yeah. uh, yes uh, I, I have heard about yeah. it yeah yeah could you speak about this uh, this agency well, uh, as I said, I have heard about it, and I also heard about a, a project of re rebuild Cabo Delgado. I I don't know if you know about this process of rebuild Cabo Delgado, uh, but you can see also that uh, while they want to hide that the situation is getting worse, it really get it going worse because they don't want to accept. Apparently our government doesn't want to see why it is in front of them. That's why they are keeping creating uh, uh, like uh, solutions, like they already created a solution and they are only now uh, trying to uh, find measures to to strengthen this this solution or seja fortalecer essas soluções que aparentemente estão a ser encontradas i'm sorry to to say that i was just wanted to clarify what i wanted to say and uh, what you can see about this agency and also this project of rebuild capital that do you asking what are they rebuilding while communities cannot be on their in their areas they yes talking yes but uh, the, uh, this agency first of all uh, are there financial resources uh, for this agency because this is the first problem <laughs> this is the what sorry this is the, this is the first problem that is this agency mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. as uh, 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 as uh, um, uh, yes financial resources to carry out uh, uh, serious interventions and, and which specific inter intervention will be taken while you are not accepting that uh, the social problems can be the cause of the conflict i'm asking for example a part of uh, financial resources. You create financial resources. Is this to involve the, the youth communities to have access to employ? 
I'm asking is this uh, uh, what is the line of development for this agency because most of uh, create agencies of course we need to create local uh, solutions to local problems but first of all we need to attack the 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 the, the causes of the problems in yeah. the ground on the yeah. ground yeah sure and not creating things just to hide the the real screen the real face of the problem mm -hmm. yeah okay and um, in this moment uh, um, what about the the military uh, situation and uh, what's your opinion uh, about the uh, external intervention of uh, SADC and uh, Rwanda armies. Yeah, this it's really uh, difficult for us to understand has Mozambicans because in has I already said in first instance the government was saying that we don't we are not living a situation of war. Uh, but suddenly uh, even before they accept that ACDC go to the ground, they accept Rwanda to came. And for us was like, Rwanda, how come? Uh, which we started to 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 Google which which kind of relationship we had we have as Mozambique with Rwanda. Uh, we started to try it, to it, it, it seems it seems very strong. Uh, strange for us. It's yeah. it was really strange. How do you uh, uh, can justify this uh, this uh, agreement between our governments? How come uh, Rwanda gets get in the the on the ground to support us? What don't are you think, the don't, don't, don't you think don't you think that Macron had a role in this uh, triangulation? <laughs> uh, <laughs> can I come in? Yes. So we, we did an analysis of this at the time because um, it was kind of at the same time that quite a few things were happening in France with Rwanda, right? So Macron had a, an investigation done into France's direct responsibility of the genocide. And he was not expecting the outcome to say, actually, France was directly responsible for the genocide. So when that happened, there was a lot of, he tried to cover it up. Um, suddenly, the Rwandan army is in Mozambique. And we know that, you know, global North countries, when they want to apologize for something, instead of doing it publicly, they provide, you know, some apology through aid, through things like paying an army to come and do a job for them. So we felt that this was, because at the same time, um, one of the French soccer teams, uh, Lyon, the Lyon soccer team, mm -hmm. suddenly got the sponsorship from, yes. from Visit Rwanda, which is the Rwandan tourism agency, which mm. paid very little money to sponsor this team, which now has Visit Rwanda on the back of all the soccer t-shirts and on the, on the sleeves. Um, so there were suddenly, you know, some French links with Rwanda that came up around the same time. So there's, of course, that that element that this is a way that they could be, you know, apologizing without having to actually publicly apologize. So that was one thing. But then also, I mean, we know that Total always sets itself up in conflict areas, right? In, mm. in Yemen, in um, Mali, uh, the Sahel, in... Um, you know, so this is not a surprise. This is on the border with Tanzania. And so there always happens to be a link between Total and the junta in Myanmar, you know, the Saudi army in Yemen, where in, in, in Yemen, in Total's um, area, in, in their park, they have a Saudi prison. So this was, it wasn't a surprise that Total and the Rwandan government were in the same place because that happens a lot. So mm -hmm. it was, there was definitely where well, we still feel there's definitely a link between the French government and Total and Rwanda. It's a triangle, you know? So this was our analysis was that it's always been a triangle. Um, and the Rwandan army is doing like, um, their image on the ground is great. They, they have processes, they have complaints processes. 
you know, they don't really commit any open human rights violations, but they get all the intel from the Mozambican army. And the Mozambican army has the image of being, you know, of being a big riot, of being rogue, of being violent. But the Rwandan army doesn't have that, but this is where they're getting the yeah. intel from. Yeah. So they're keeping a very good image on the ground. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and uh, and what about uh, uh, Sadek uh, Army? Because uh, it seems that Sadek Army doesn't have this good image uh, as a Rwandan Army. No, they don't. Uh, the the Sadek Army and also the Mozambican Army are the ones who don't uh, have a, a good uh, relationship with communities. Actually communities still more comfortable in areas where the Rwandese uh, militaries are. So probably because of the, the, the way of uh, the way they behave with them, uh, putting them in a situation has, because uh, has it, your first uh, a question says, what is the origin of the insurgents? This is a question that even the government still struggled with, with found, uh, but uh, the militaries in the area, when they found anyone in communities, they can connect you if they want, they connect you with the insurgency, if they found you with money, if they they found uh, uh, small businessmen in the local, that's why a lot of people is disappearing in Palma because if they found you with a, a small amount of money, it's a problem. Everything it's a problem for you to for you to be in Palma and you can be targeted some, as someone who's supporting the insurgency because they are using it also to 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 extort the, the 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 community to take money from from the community yeah yeah okay and uh, uh, just a, a last question about uh, local civil society as well as uh, uh, local uh, organiz- organizations as uh, justice justice ambiental that is uh, do you have uh, um, um, a program, a project, a specific program uh, on Cabo Delgado as a justice ambiental, or uh, do you think that uh, uh, Mozambican organizations uh, could contribute to the rebuilding of, of Cabo Delgado? So um, at at Jao, we coordinate the Say No to Gas campaign, which specifically focuses on Cabo Delgado. So uh, a few years ago, um, 2017, it was one of the, you know, it was one of the organization's projects. But then as it just got sort of crazier and crazier, the situation, it's become a, like a specific campaign at the, at the organization. So we, we coordinate it, but we work really closely with groups like uh, Recommon, like with groups um, in France, in the UK, because all the, all the companies and governments that are in this industry are based in other countries. So any, for example, is, you know, it's one of the three biggest companies that's involved in these projects. And um, just like Total, so we work very closely with Friends of the Earth France and then um, ExxonMobil. So with any being, you know, such a so massively complicit in this, it's really important that we work with the Italian groups and activists to actually take this issue to the any headquarters, you know, to take it to the law, to the the courts in Italy. So um, yeah, so this is how the campaign works. But we we spend a lot of um, uh, the, a big part of the work is actually colleagues like Kat and focal points who are in, in communities doing that work, doing that field work, and then taking it to the international level where organizations like Recommon Rule and Friends of the Earth France and UK would, you know, take it to, would sort of raise it with decision makers, take it to, to the, power, the, the levels of power in those countries. So um, it is quite a specific, one of our very specific projects and it's a very international campaign um, and it's quite big and the, the government and the industry is getting 
feel like they're getting pretty scared actually <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, and j just to add, as you, you, you asked about civil society in Mozambique, if they are not involved in this, actually civil society in Mozambique, they are talking about these issues, they are writing some articles about this, uh, but the point is that uh, most of them, uh, they believe that if there is some inclusion, uh, if uh, the benefits, economic benefits, social benefits goes to communities, the things could be better. Different from us who we are saying that, we are saying no to get exploitation of gas in Mozambique because of all these impacts that were already predicted. Because uh, if you analyze uh, extractive industry in Africa, it plays the same role in all the countries. Is So why Mozambique could be different? So probably I could say that, uh, uh, I can say that it's because we don't believe that uh, this industry can bring any kind of benefits from, from, for, for us, even social, economic, or, or, or in terms of climate change, because the, the, the negative impacts are already on the ground and most of them can be irreversible. So how can we guarantee that even the communities are be, being most involved and receive money, it will change something? Mm -hmm. uh, because they are more mm -hmm. focused on profit. They will, will always be more focused on profit. So they won't change their, their behavior of because they want to involve Mozambican communities. They have been in Nigeria, they have been in other parts of Africa, and they didn't they behave the same way they are behaving in Mozambique. The militaris the militarization in uh, in Cabo Delgado, it's uh, it's uh, it's it's the way they act in all all areas. This mm. is only uh, uh, we are only import the same way they they work in other areas. Mm. So as Ilam say, Total has this experience in working in in uh, in uh, territories with conflicts. They okay. They say they they appeal to force majority and they they went out. They took out their investments. But since mm. the beginning of this year, the new president of Total has been in Palma with the government. Mm -hmm. uh, to to visit communities and tell them that the project the project is coming we received the the the, the platform that will do that that big uh, infrastructure that will be uh, offshore so yeah. things are happening mm -hmm. not in the same uh, speed that was uh, predicted but that the things are happening mm -hmm. they 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 won't uh, take out the investment. And what I what we feel is that they are putting pressure on the government to accept more and more the the the, the things that they need to make the project goes mm -hmm. on. But there's also there's been like even before this there was very little space for civil society. Yes, in Mozambique. and still, yeah. And so and this has just gotten worse. Yeah. So um, there was a head of the Rwanda Refugee Association who was assassinated, and there's there people like especially a lot of Rwandans actually who have been assassinated in Mozambique, and it's it's not that hard to assassinate someone from civil society or mm -hmm. an uh, yeah, an association in Mozambique. So there's, and also, I mean, in the North, so we are seen as a very sort of radical organization because we really are the only ones who, who speak out. And it also means that there's a lot of um, public um, animosity to some of the things that we say, because it's very different to what to what people are being told. Mm -hmm. um, but I think also what's really important is to, to look at the, the closing space for media, uh, because just as you know, activists are disappearing, so are journalists. Mm -hmm. If there was a journalist two, year, two years ago, Yes, two years yeah. ago, who- in, in, yeah, 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 in Cabo de Gaia, of a uh, community local radio. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah. Ibrahim Baruk yeah. has disappeared, yes. and um, he and and there was also an article. We were, if you're interested, we wrote two analyses. The one was about media, and the other one was about um, Rwanda. And I could send those to you. Um, but the thing about the journalists is also that a, a lot of journalists from Cabo Delgado are not being able to to actually access the area themselves, while 
um, other journalists, you know, who are more mainstream and work with the government are able to do that. So just um, actually having access to, to writing something. And then if you do have access, you know, the, the risks are so high that it's very difficult to get information out. So I think that uh, closing space for civil society and media are, are, are very important. Yeah, so uh, a last question. If you had to suggest, to, to give suggestion to Mozambican government, would you say now not to gas, stop uh, the investment in gas? Is, is this your, uh, your idea, your position? Yes, of course. Yes, yes, very much. Yes. If you take out the gas industry from the equation, all these problem, problems wouldn't exist because before the industry was in the area, we, were, we wasn't leave this kind of, of, of situations. And also there is a lot already, there is a lot of recommendations to government, not, not to say no to gas, but to, to start to look to internal problems of inequality because Cabo Delgado has been all over this year facing these problems of inequality. What's, what's happening is that the level of pressure on the land make that all these problems came out. You know that there is a study made by the civil society in Mozambique saying that the number of concession, license concession for exploitation in Cabo Delgado instead of decrease uh, due to this conflict, they increase in 47%. Yeah. Yeah. So it shows you how instead of the conflict create a retract to some uh, 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 multinationals, it, um, it seems that it, it attracts more of them. Mm -hmm. Maybe because it's more easy in the situation of conflict that you won't be paying taxes, for example. Yeah. But it's also like, I mean, that, you know, the question about the Mozambican government saying yes or no, there's also the, you know, there's a, a lot of factors to be considered in the, and with, without taking away agency from the government, there's also the power dynamics that come with, with a project like this. So, um, you know, governments don't corrupt themselves, right? And it, I mean, if you look at the amount of debt that the government is in now because of this project, um, because of the tuna bond scandal, there's, um, you know, there are a whole lot of other elements that come that come into the, the desperation for making money, mm. but that would happen sort of by all, and that, it, actually, let me, let me go back on this. <laughs> um, there's, there's a lot of money that was lost during that corruption scandal that people need to to get back and it's all money that's gone to elites and political yeah political elites so there's there's i mean there's also the the element of historical debt you know there's so much historical debt that mozambique and other global south countries owe to the global north that needs to be cancelled but that's not and it puts this government and so many other governments in the global south in a in a position where they do not have have they don't have as much power as if so the question of if you you know would you tell the Mozambican government to stop is yes but it's not like the question of would you tell the French government to to stop with the project it's um it's uh, they I think there's a lot of blame that also needs to be put on the companies that are there as much as the Mozambican government mm -hmm. if that makes okay. sense yeah okay yeah, it's clear. <laughs> I, I wanted to understand uh, your position uh, on, on, the, on the, gas, the, the business of the gas, and it's very clear. So uh, uh, thank you. I don't know if we want to, to add something before closing our meeting. Mm, yes, yes. Uh, all this campaign that we are holding is to guarantee that we take back the peace in communities, is to guarantee that K at least can at least have their livelihoods rescued. Because even of the problems of poor uh, 
poorness in the community, they have peace, they had peace in somehow in that time before the projects. They at least have access to see and access to land. They were living in, uh, in peace. So what we need now is to rescue this, uh, this peace for them, rescue the hope. Because if you see them, uh, I, I, I was, uh, I work with closely with them and I know them. I, I have some images of these people directly affected. How their faces are changing because of the, all these problems. Because as a human being, you feel the problems uh, in, in your skin and you, it affects you psychologically, emotionally, and economically so mm -hmm. it is important to for us uh, for the government for all the involved parts or in this uh, in this uh, problem to take uh, to take uh, urgent decisions to stop and to resolve mm -hmm. all this problem problem yeah mm -hmm. and i think also the there needs to be a change in the mainstream narrative of separating the gas and the um, and the, the conflict, because often we'd find industry players saying, well, you can't really link us to the conflict because it's Islamic insurgency, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but without sort of acknowledging the, what Kat's been saying, you know, like there's been tensions for a long time, but it's never exploded to this point. And then when, you know, the, the military knows the, um, sorry, the industry like Total and Exxon, they know what the Mozambican military has been doing and is capable of, but yet pay the government extra to deploy more soldiers just to protect them. So this narrative has to change so that it is, they are linked. The, the, the gas, the conflict would not be there because it wasn't for the gas. So, and the gas being able to, the gas industry being able to bring in armies and protection that wouldn't be there if it were not for the conflict. So while they keep trying to separate it from each other, it's it's really important that we keep that link together. Okay. Many thanks. Uh, as you said before, uh, the the issue is very complex. So uh, we we have to to thank you uh, um, to thank uh, um, Justice Ambiental as well as uh, uh, Recomo and Nigrizia uh, that uh, organized uh, this, uh, this meeting. And uh, I hope that uh, your work in, in Mozambique uh, will go on. Uh, and uh, I know that Justice Ambiental is a very important uh, uh, organization. I remember uh, its struggle again, uh, against uh, um, uh, Mozal Bypass, uh, Pro Savana, that is, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, very important struggles. And uh, yes, yes. so, yeah, I, I hope that uh, this uh, uh, struggle <laughs> against gas, uh, um, I could say against uh, the current pattern of development uh, will have a, a success. So thanks, uh, th thank you very much. And uh, I think that uh, we can uh, close uh, our meeting. A luta continua, a luta continua. A luta continua, <laughs> nunca acaba. <laughs> oh, okay. Ciao. Okay. Ciao.